Hi, my name's Darren Mostyn, and I'm going to show you 10 killer tips. These are classic tips that have been in the software for ages. So tip number one, power window softening. Circle power windows have softness control, but it's inside and outside softness at the same time. To gain individual control, if you click here and say convert to Bezier, you now have control over the inside and outside separately. Tip two is power window opacity. We've got two power windows, one in each face, and I'm just going to adjust the gamma to bring it down. And it's come down, it's a little bit dark on both faces there, but using opacity, I can individually control each face. So there's the first one. Click on the second power window, and there you go, done. Tip number three is Lightbox. Lightbox is a great place to copy and paste grades from, especially on long form programs. So if we take this shot we've just graded, we have instances of it here. So I'm just pressing Command on my Mac keyboard to multiple select. And then all I've got to do is middle mouse click on the graded shot, and the other shots are graded. Simple. So tip four is append node to multiple clips. Let's add a new node. I'm going to apply a bit of sharpen. And what I want to do is copy that sharpen to all the other shots that are the same. So let's just multiple select. So I'm pressing Command. And we've got another one there, another one there. We've got our node highlighted. It doesn't matter where the node is in your node tree. And you go to Color, and you say Append Node to Selected Clips. And now if we look at this clip, we see the sharpen is on the end because it was appended. Same here. Tip number five, nice and simple. If you command and drag, you can swap your node order. And you don't have to have adjacent nodes either. So I can go like this and literally swap the node order. So command and drag. If you alt and drag, you'll copy the grade across. So if I go here to here, it's literally copied that grade across. Tip number six, you can adjust your timeline thumbnail size. So if you go to view and come down here to timeline thumbnail size, you see you've got small, medium, and large. So if I click on small, you get tiny little icons, and that's really good if you're on a laptop. Tip number seven is using split screen mode to help me analyze scenes using my scopes. So we've got a shot here, and I want to analyze it against this shot here to get them balanced. So what I can do is use split screen mode. So if I select the shot I want to compare with, I'm using command to select, go into split screen mode, and you see at the minute we're in what's called the version and original. So this is the original ungraded shot, and this is the current grade. But I can select here any mode that I want for the split screen. So if I choose selected clips, it's now comparing the selected clip here with my current clip. And what's useful here is that the waveform and parade are showing the full scene. So let me go back to the waveform. If I just adjust our graded clip here, you'll see that the graded clip is on the right-hand side of the scope, and the shot I want to balance to is on the left-hand side of the scope. Tip eight is reference repositioning. So if we come out of the split screen mode, another way to compare scenes is to use the image wipe. So if I double click a thumbnail, you've then got this image wipe mode. So I can just wipe across there. And I want to compare these two scenes, but I'd like to compare the girl with the girl. So often you'll find it's the wrong part of the image. An easy way to get around this is come down to the sizing tool and down the bottom is reference sizing and now what I'm doing is adjusting the parameters of just the reference clip so now I've got that lined up much better and I can now compare exactly the part of the shot that I want ready to balance my grade just be careful this doesn't reset so later down the timeline you might do it again you'll notice your reference sizing doesn't change so you might find something appears that you didn't quite expect. So just reset the reference sizing after you've finished. So tip nine, I'm going to show you the best view when working with open effects. So let's just bring this node over here. I'm going to add another one. And we're going to go to our open effects library. So in here, we've got a whole ton of open effects. By the way, you can close all these down if you press on the right hand side of it. So it's a really good way of just organizing them. And I want to choose an open effect that's got a lot of menus. So if I open up the light and go to lens reflection, you see that there's a whole ton of menus here. So what we can do is press Shift and F, and that'll take us into a really good view. We get a nice big full screen on our GUI, so we can see our image really nice and big. But also, we've really expanded this menu now. So I've now got access to all the tools without having to scroll down too much. The other thing you can do in this mode is click on Nodes, and you can actually still see your node tree if you want to work like that. So it's a, just a really quick and easy way. So that's Shift F. And to go back to where you were, Shift F again.
So my final killer tip for this video, tip number 10, is exporting stills for your client without hitting the delivery page. So let's go and add a still album. I'm going to grab a still here. And let's grab this shot here. And maybe the opening scene here. And I want to send all three of these to the client. So I'm going to shift select. So they're all highlighted. Right hand click and just say export. Then we go to our folder. And by default, it's going to export a DPX file. We don't want to send our client DPX files. We're going to send them a JPEG. Say export. You'll also get a .drx file, which is containing the grade information. So you can actually just delete those. And then you'll see you've got three JPEGs ready to go to the client. The size of the JPEG will depend on the size of your timeline resolution. So I hope you found those tips useful. Please subscribe. It's a new channel, so I'm trying to bring you lots of tips and tricks for DaVinci Resolve here. I also have a Facebook page called Killer Tips DaVinci Resolve. My name is Darren Mostyn, and uh, look after yourselves, and I'll see you on the next video.